Let's say today you receive some really, really good news. For example, maybe you got a promotion at work, or maybe you won a really fantastic raffle contest prize, or maybe a customer that you helped the other day really went out of their way to tell you how amazing and awesome you are. What do we typically do after we receive news like that? Well, we want to share it with those close to us. We share it with our best friends, our girlfriend or boyfriend, or even our family members. But what do they respond with? Oh, good for you. Or maybe just... Okay, but what's for dinner? It can be frustrating to have a response like that. Today's video is to share with you research to help better explain why that may be frustrating, as well as to provide you with research on what happens to couples over time who continue to have responses like that. This research was conducted on 79 couples by Professor Shelley Gable. And what it focused on was how couples share news with one another. What they found was that interactions can generally be categorized into four types. Let's say Mary came home from her job and told her husband that she got promoted at work. The first type of response her husband could have is active constructive. Whoa, this is great news. Your hard work skills are definitely paying off. How exactly did the promotion come about? A passive constructive response would be That's nice, dear. An active destructive response would be Promotion? Oh, I bet that promotion is just going to need more work for you. I mean, you're probably working even longer hours this month and it was, maybe it was offered to you because no one wants that position. A passive destructive response would be Oh, promotion? Okay. Oh, well guess what happened to me today? Or, oh, promotion? Well, what are we having for dinner tonight? Not surprisingly, only active constructive responses were associated with positive personal well-being and higher relationship quality. All the other three responses were basically negatively associated. In fact, for women in particular, if they had an important event happen in their life and shared it with their male partners, the response of their male partners was crucial. So for example, if they had an active constructive response, then they felt that their male partners were really highly responsive. But if they responded passively or active destructively, then they felt that their male partners were you know, very much on the low end of the responsiveness scale. So why exactly is active constructive responses so much better than all the other responses? Well, for one thing, it shows that you're personally happy about what just occurred. Number two, it shows that you understand the significance and importance of this event in your partner's life. Number three, it allows him or her to basically savor the joy much longer. And finally, all of these three things basically allow the both of you to really create a bond over the good news. All of the other three types of responses signify the reverse. Basically that A, the event itself isn't important. B, you haven't taken the time to really understand how personally important and significant the event was. Or C, that the thoughts and feelings of the other person just isn't important. The long-term implication of this type of responsiveness is best illustrated through psychologist John Gottman. He's famous for being able to predict with a 94% certainty whether a couple will stay together or divorce. In his research, what he found was a major difference was whether partners turned towards each other or away. And what I mean by that is that throughout the day, partners will basically make requests for a personal connection what he calls bids. An example would be a husband who really, really, really likes rabbits. So one day he's out driving his car with his wife, he spots a rabbit over there and he's like, hey honey, check out the rabbit over there. Isn't it awesome? The wife now has the opportunity to either turn towards him and connect with him on the rabbit or turn away or ignore him and basically not connect. What John Gottman found after following up with subjects after six years was that the couples who divorced basically only turned towards their partner 33% of the time. The couples who were still together, their partners turned towards them 87% of the time. Essentially, nine times out of 10, they would meet their partner's emotional needs. In conclusion, try to have active constructive responses to your partner. 
show enthusiasm for the great news that they're sharing with you. Ask them questions about how it came about. That way it shows that you understand the personal significance this event means to them. It also allows them to savor the joy of the moment that much longer. All of these things will basically allow both of you to really bond over the great news. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please check out my other videos on my channel as well.